Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now it's really early. I mean, about two hours early, is it? Or it might be more than that. Um, because I've got a courier coming to collect some parcels which were too heavy to take to the drop off point, and my usual courier won't take them because they're too big. So it's a really long, drawn out story. But as, as it is with couriers, when you're having a collection, you have to be there, be there when they're going to be there, which isn't when I'm going to be open. So, any mind. Uh, anyway, I thought. Great opportunity, I can do, but the phone isn't ringing, because obviously I'm closed, so I can do a video. Um, and I wanted to look at, and over there, um, I've got the transcript reference, which I asked last, I, I briefly showed it in a, a previous video and said, if you've got any information about this, uh, let me know, because I had a sort of brief outline in my mind that it was, they'd been made by, um, I knew David Gammon was a designer, and that John Michel, had had a license to make them at one point. I also knew there was a bit of controversial stuff going on as well. Um, what I actually got information-wise was, was a bit of a deluge of things. I actually even had David Gammon's son on the phone for probably 40 minutes, actually, which was really interesting. I mean, he's a lovely guy. Um, went all the way through the history of, of the company. I can't really go into it too much because there's an awful lot... Uh, there's, there's a lot of ang anger about it, even 50-odd even years on. 60 years on pretty much um, which is understandable to be honest but yeah there's always two sides to stories I suppose but I, I think for that reason I don't want to go into too much detail about it really um, but anyway, the main thing is to look at the turntable because it is a wonderful bit of engineering it really is I mean there's an astonishing thing and now I know more about it as this specific one that's here anyway uh, so it'd be interesting to have a look so let's turn the camera around I'll do a quick edit and I'll turn the camera around so there you go, that's the transcript to reference. I mean, it is a thing of beauty. I mean, it's an absolute engineering masterpiece. When you, when you look at the fine details of it, it's an incredible deck. Um, even simple things like the on-off switch, it's just over-engineered beyond belief. It's just ridiculous. And I'll, I'll, I'll go around all this sort of, the detail of this in a sec, to be honest. Um, this is unusual, it's a black one. Uh, I believe there's only about four have ever been made of this. There's actually quite, there's more out there than you would believe. I mean, it's, um, because they've been making these since 1963, it's still available. Uh, I mean, I believe there's, a bit, there's still a, a sort of small range of turntables. They don't really have any, have any UK dealers, but you can buy direct from, from Transcriptor. Um, I think they're just basically in small numbers. It's not, it's not a, a, a big sort of outfit particularly, but there's, you know, they are being produced. Parts are being produced and whatever. Uh, there's various accessories for this you can get. Um, yeah, David Gammon himself, he was, he started out, typical sort of story really, sort of an enthusiast, a bit dismayed with the quality of, of record players that were available at the time, um, what would have been Goldwyn Lenkos and that sort of thing, idle, idle wheel drives and all this sort of thing and loads of rumble and it, it, it was, that was the era, that's what, that and this sort of things were produced. Um, and after making accessories for these decks to make them better or whatever, he, the transcriptor was born. So from about 1963, so we're looking at a turntable with a six, which is like 60 years old in, in design anyway. For, for a short time it was made under licence by Jean-Michel. And then I think uh, it was a, an, a, I'll probably get my facts wrong now, even though I've, I actually wrote all this down, I should refer to my notes. I think it was made by Transrota for a while as well. Um, but now it's being made by David Gammon's son. So long, long, long life. Um, what do I want to say? The this one particularly. I'll just talk about this deck actually more now. I don't want to get too much, like I say, too much into the history. This one came in. I might remember to have an arm change. It just had an, a, a, an ordinary RB three hundred on it. Uh, it's been swapped out for a, a Michelle Techno arm, which is really good actually. I like, the, I, I like the Techno. It's one of the few Riga modded arms, um, well modified Riga arms that actually seems to work and follows the principle of it. Really, we've got an underslung counterweight at the back, um, metal metal stub. Uh, it's actually drilled out underneath, you can't really see that very well, but along here it's actually drilled out along, there's sort of two rows of holes underneath. Very fine, this camera won't resolve it, uh, but very, very fine um, internal wiring on it. I never understand, there's a lot of manufacturers that modify Riga arms that put heavier cable in, in there, which is probably better cable, but the actual so the freedom of movement to the tone arm is much more important than the quality of the cable, to be honest. Uh, but this is a, a good quality. I think it's Litz cable they use, which is very, very pure, very, very fine cable, and it, it, it does work. It's a, it's a good, 
it's a good version of it really. Um, fitted it with a little gold ring 1042 which, which suits it really, it's sort of, uh, you know, that kind of, that's got that kind of sound really, that nice, nice natural sound that, uh, that you want from it really. So yeah, let's have a closer look at the design of it. I'm just going to cut, do a quick cut again, just in case anybody walks in. So operationally, turn arm obviously the same as Riga arm, just lift lower, move the arm across, totally manual. Um, on the, this like panel here, we've got various things going on in here. The, these three are just attaching the panel to the deck. That one, which just looks like another of the attachment nuts, is actually the on off switch. So if you just rotate that, here's a little click. And we start. I'll, I'll take this off in a second, just show you what's going on there. Because, like I say, it's just there's there's so many ways you could have done it, but it's quite it's just quite a cute solution to it, to be honest. And this little device here is just to lifts up and just I'm not going to do it, but it pulls the belt onto the pulley, the next size of the pulley. So it's it's like your manual change on a Riga, except there's a little a little lever that pulls it up and down, so you don't have to disassemble anything. Again, just a very clever engineering solution to. A bit of an age-old problem, really. So what I'll do, um, actually, I'm just going to let run a minute. <laughs> They're quite mesmerising, really. Um, whether I agree with the idea of having the record just sitting on the little felt pads of the, because there's there's no um, top platter for this. This is as it is. You put the record straight onto that. There's arguments for it. There's arguments against it, really. I think. Um, as far as transmission of vibration goes, this is brilliant because it's, it's only touching at certain points on the record. But then in some respects, if you, set the, if you have the deck so it is very, very, a very dead structure, you almost want to have the record firmly on the, on the platter to stop resonance with it, internal resonances within the record. So it's, I don't know, it's, sort of, it's a different way of doing this. I mean, other manufacturers have done this and I've seen um, mats for record players which, which kind of recreate this effect of the, the, the very minimal contact of the record. So it's an interesting idea, and to be fair, it does sound quite good. I mean, the, my memory of these was that it didn't sound particularly good, but I think I've only heard the Jean-Michel version, um, because it's funny, in conversation about this, uh, the ones I've seen had a, a very sort of strange foot arrangement, almost like a sprung, bit of sprung steel underneath that it, the, the deck sat on and it sort of, it sort of gave it a bit of suspension. But it always sounded a bit soft to me, it never quite sounded sort of audiophile. It was nice, but it wasn't anything exciting, whereas this seems to have a bit more pep about it somehow. I've been playing it in, on my little test rig. Uh, and it's quite, it's quite a punchy sounding deck actually, nice, nice and open. So there's some slight differences with this. Um, I think the true transcriptors seem to be a little bit better, really. But anyway, I'd, I'd need to do a side-by-side -side on it, but anyway. But interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, another quick cut, because what I'll do, I'll, I'll take off this top board and let you have a look underneath. Here we go with the, uh, this is with the top board off, so you can actually see all the gubbins inside. Uh, so that's your speed change. I can't, obviously I can't do, the deck's not running, so I can't actually do this, but Basically, we'll push that down and it to knock it onto the bottom pulley. There's a little nick out of the pulley there so, so that it'll actually grab it as it goes past. So, yeah, great solution. Now, this device here is the on-off switch, which, if you look at it, it's basically just two bits of metal sat very close to each other. And on the top board, where the, the switch that you actually turn underneath, there's just a magnet. So, obviously, turn, turn the switch. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it with one hand, I thought I'd be able to. But anyway, you can see the little magnet there. Imagine that sort of spins around. And as it turns, it'll, the mag magnetism will just pull these two contacts together and start the deck. And it just works brilliantly. I mean, it's just a, com a completely ingenious solution to it, really. It's just very slick. It feels nice when you just, you just basically turn, turn this very smooth control. A little click and the deck starts. And it's just, it's just a really nice touch, to be honest. So, um, so yeah, that's it, really. That's, it's like I say, just a n just nice engineering solutions to to problems, I suppose. Just makes makes the f thing feel a bit more s special, to be honest. So I can put this back together. Why I'm doing this on camera, I don't know. It's little little separators. So yeah, this is ready to go back to the customer, um, who's also a Riga user as well. So be interesting to see what he thinks between the two. Um, Over tight and that, but yeah, it's um, overall it's a good deck, and it's it's just just an interesting one because of the history of it. 
Um, and the Clockwork Orange link is always a good thing. Anything that's been in a film. <laughs> Why, I don't know, but it does. So anyway, that's, um, let's turn the camera around. That's the transcriptor reference. Um, yeah, oh, I can think I'm due a cup of, cup of coffee now. Um, you know what's going to happen is it's going to get to the point of it being opening time and this courier won't have come. It, it, you, you just know. When they say, oh, we'll be there from 8 o'clock, you just know that they're not going to be. Anyway, I'll, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go and have a cup of, cup of coffee uh, just to try and wake myself up a little bit. It's going to be a long day today because I've actually got, as well as coming in early, I've also got um, another tone I'm in store, actually. I've got, I've got to take somebody's... Um, what is it? Nottingham, Nottingham 12 inch tone arm that's been rewired with Nordos Tier 2, believe it or not. Um, it's a three and a half thousand pound tone arm cable. So I'm taking that back to him, refitting it to his deck, refitting his, um, his Kiseki A gate cartridge, which is always scary. Top end cartridges refitting with my eyesight. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing tonight. So I'll be lucky to get out of there by, because normally we have something to eat and then we'd listen to some records and then we do the whatever we're doing and then we, um, I'll be lucky to get out there before one in the morning. So it's going to be a long day. <laughs> All good fun though. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like. We're rapidly approaching 9,000 subscribers. Thanks so much for subscribing and um, and believing me as a, as a hi-fi person, because it, it feels really good, to be fun, honest. It's really, it's really, it's, it is a really nice feeling to have all this sort of follower thing going on and people ringing me up and everything. So anyway, let's leave it there. I'll see you in a future video.